Rocks go. Go. LD is go. MD. MD is go. LD, verify go to initiate terminal count. LC, you are go to initiate terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. Hey, guess what? We're back, and we're about to be launching a lander to be able to complete our Duna surface landing mission. This is a really, really complex mission, so it's been a lot of effort to get it all together, and this is one of the last major pieces that'll have to actually fly. Our crew has yet to head up, but that will be a separate launch right before we're ready to depart. Keeping with my theme, I'd like to keep crew launches to a minimum and use as many automated transfer vehicles as I can to get things in place before the crew even shows up. Atlas is plenty up for the job on this one, and the lander is going to be paired with a descent element that's going to be able to take it all the way to the surface. The descent element is on the back of the lander there with a monopropellant tank to help support the mission and that heat shield is going to be inflated once we're on our final burn. At this point, we're three months out from departure for Duna. Both ships are docked and fully assembled at Tycho, and they're ready to be fueled with propellant. The new lander has a drill on board to be able to supply the two spacecraft and mine a ton of LH-2 to be able to fill the reserve tanks as well. We're also doing a shakedown for the lander to confirm that everything inside of it works correctly before any crew gets on board. The lander has the ability to mine ore, so we're gonna be testing that as well. And one of the things I figured out was the engines on this are not very throttleable, so it is really tricky to land, but with a little more gravity on Duna, it should be a little easier. I also had to make a small upgrade using an intermediate launch with a set of radiators there on a docking port. So those radiators allow us to mine more effectively and we don't need to start and stop like the old version. From this point on, we're going to mine ore for three months to be able to fill the liquid hydrogen tanker and get things ready to go. In the end, it took two sorties of the tanker to be able to fill the two spacecraft up at Tycho. I'm only going to show the one ascent, but this actually took a very, very long time, so there's a lot of improvement that could be had on our mining capabilities here. The tanker carries about 200 tons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen up to the station, and both of those are going to be burned in the cryogenic drives of the two spacecraft. Once the tanker has arrived at the station and offloaded the final propellant reserve, we can make a go-no-go -no -go for crew arrival. This mission is also being funded in part by a set of tourists that are going to be flying as well. So with our lander returned and our astronaut crew and science crew on board and ready for departure, our final crew can arrive as well. They're going to arrive in an Orion vehicle seen there on an Ares-1 solid rocket transfer vehicle. They're going to be launching at L-7 days to departure, and at that point we have minimized our risk to the crew, we've minimized our time in microgravity, and we will be fully confirmed that everything's ready to go before putting any lives on the line.
At this point, it's time for the main event. Departure day. Two spacecraft depart Minimus with very minimal Delta V expenditure, and then perform a secondary deep space transit burn to do. Copernicus has a drop tank, which it will expend, and then begin rotating to perform an artificial gravity maneuver. Chetsamoka is uncrewed, and will just act as a cargo and lander transport vehicle cruising in a longer trajectory to Duna. We can spin the spacecraft on its axis up to 0.38 G. Over the duration of the trip, that minimizes the health effects on the crew in theory. Even though the game doesn't have that mechanic, I like to try and imagine that is a part of the canon here. With our two spacecraft linked up, it's time to send the crew into the lander and head down to the surface. Two crew will descend to the surface for a six hour stay. Our onboard cryogenic propellant requires constant cooling and active power to actually maintain it. So we're gonna be using only a single six hour day, essentially to maintain our operations on the surface here. We have to keep those panels lit. And then when the day ends, we have to depart. In the meantime, we can extract some regolith, surface samples, plant some flags, and get up back to the orbiting spacecraft. Initial mission complete, it's time to move to phase two, which the crew will wait in orbit for a second resupply mission of habitats, power, and other support equipment to extend our stay and build up this infrastructure. So thanks for watching, and in the next episode, we'll be adding a lot more hardware.